The number of women in Texas prisons has grown, even as the state lessens the overall number of prisoners. According to a recent survey from the Texas Criminal Justice Coalition, 80% of women in Texas prisons are mothers. More than half were physically or sexually abused prior to their incarceration, and about 80% were survivors of domestic violence. Now lawmakers are pushing for gender-specific support, treatment, and diversion options to get female inmates the help that they need. Joining us now are two formerly incarcerated women, Coretta Knox and Lauren Johnson. Lauren is also the criminal justice coordinator for the ACLU of Texas. Thank you to both of you for being on the program. Yeah, Thank thanks you for having, for having us. us. Uh, Lauren, I'll start with you, but uh, first off, if you can just briefly t tell us a little bit about what you went through. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I've been to prison three times, and uh, the second time that I was there, I had just found out I was pregnant when I had my when I was arrested, and so I had my first son while I was incarcerated. Um, and so I, I know what it's like to be separated from your child. Um, I know what it's like to um, miss all of the moments in their lives that are really important. Um, and I saw the other women um, in similar circumstances, uh, crimes of poverty, crimes of substance use, um, and I don't think that that should should be the reason that you lose contact or custody of your children. Um, so I want to see us work towards fixing that. Coretta, what was your experience? So um, with me, I was a first time felon, and I haven't um, committed a crime since then. But I was given a pretrial um, investigation, but there wasn't any programs available for people like me. So I was like trying to figure out the whole pretrial thing on my own and wasn't successful, and because I wasn't successful at completing my own pretrial, um, I was sentenced to eight years in prison. But um, education in prison is so important to me, and the programs in prison and coming out of prison reentry are so important to me because I was one of two women out of 11,000 to receive my associate's degree while in there. Um, but it just make it, you know, they make it so difficult to even get that. And they tell you over and over that, you know, you need to have X amount of education, the more education you have, the um, better your chances are of not um, reoffending. but then they make it so difficult to get the education. Yeah, I mean, part of the study that the TCJC looked at was some of those statistics as well. Um, how could it have been improved in your time there, and what are you pushing for now? I think the, a couple of things, right? One of them is humane treatment. Um, the the Dignity Act is one of the things that we've been working on. Um, there are several bills that kind of address some of these issues, things like uh, providing adequate supply and quality of feminine hygiene products so that women don't have to beg when uh, they have their cycle. Um, I think training the guards regarding trauma screenings because, like you said, 80% of the women who are incarcerated in our system have histories of trauma. Um, and Expand. Trauma screenings is part of one of the bills as well. It yeah. is. It is. And I think ultimately what I think is that we should divert as many of these women as possible because most of them don't necessarily need prison to get back on track. We need to provide community-based sentencing alternatives that address the root cause of crime instead of just warehousing somebody in a prison where they're not getting the programs and services that they need. From what you've seen, from what lawmakers are pushing, and some of the, you know, I'm sure that you've had a say in, what would you say are some of the things that are most needed? Um, most needed are definitely the diversion programs, but um, we do we need to refund Project Rio. We need to bring uh, Project Rio back and allow the Texas Workforce Commission to have um, control of it, like for, they did once. Before. For those who don't know, what is that? So Project Rio was once a, um, it was a program that was being funded by the Texas Workforce Commission. So they would give different kinds of uh, uh, work, um, education for people that was coming out of prison, like a pre-release. And then once you came out from prison, you had so much help available. But like when you come out from prison now, that help is not there. Opportunities to be able to uh, move that forward. I know that you guys are also uh, putting on a, a march tomorrow. Uh, to the Capitol, what are you hoping to accomplish with this? Um, I think a couple of things. I think we want to accomplish uh, making voices heard that are usually silenced. 
Um, we want to be able to represent the 12,500 women who are currently incarcerated in our system, um, which is more than any other state. Um, and so, you know, as you mentioned, crime and um, prison populations have decreased. But we've seen this huge increase in women's incarceration, and they lack access to the same kind of programming that exists for the men, the same kind of education. So I hope to raise some of those issues and kind of lend a voice and let the people that are behind the walls know that people out here care and are, are, and are fighting for them. Greta, you're helping lead this whole thing. What, what are you hoping to accomplish? Um, so the same thing. Um, you know, I want to let them know that we're out here working for them, rooting for them, um, trying to make sure that they have something to come home to trying to make sure that um, the lawmakers hear, hear our voice and that they understand these um, bills that we're pushing, we're pushing for a reason. And, um, you know, just trying to get the bills passed. Yeah, I mean, from what you're hearing from lawmakers, there was an emotional testimony at a hearing today. What are you hearing in terms of actually having these move forward? Um, we haven't heard anything yet, but I feel pretty encouraged by the testimony and the responses and the questions that lawmakers had today. Um, I think that between the Me Too movement and the reports and the research that have kind of illuminated of some of these issues and helped them bubble to the top, I feel like the timing is just so perfect right now that um, we can't ignore it, right? Today in the committee hearing, we had people from the Repub young Republicans and the Democratic coalition, both there testifying in support of most of these bills that would create better opportunities for people inside and out of our criminal justice system. So I feel really hopeful and encouraged by that. We will be uh, out watching and covering the march tomorrow. Coretta, Lauren, thank you so much for being on the program. We Thanks appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having us.